Hey guys, for Bombhart here. So for today's video, I got my uh, coil spring knife that I've been doing my uh, instructional videos on. And so today, I'm going to be making the uh, handle. So um, with knife making, it, it really depends on what sort of knife that you've got. Uh, and there's lots of different methods for making handles. Um, and I'm by no means an expert nor a woodworker. Uh, but this is the method that works for me and it's using very basic uh, hand tools. So something I feel that anybody really has a good chance of getting into. Um, so with a knife like this that I consider to be a Viking style of knife, you've got this narrow tang. Uh, and so the type of tools that you'll need for this basically are just an axe or a hatchet, um, a knife. Now this is just a um, regular fixed blade knife. This is a more number one as it happens. Um, and then I've also got a Mora draw knife. Now this is fairly inexpensive, um, so I would recommend picking up one of these. But uh, those are really what I use for shaping the handle. Uh, and then you could also use chisels if you had those, but they're definitely not uh, necessary. And then for drilling out the hole for the tang, an auger or a drill uh, is really all you're gonna need there. This is gonna be kind of my methods and techniques for making a handle for a Viking style knife using the tools that would have been available to the Vikings. That's why I'm calling this video Making a Knife Handle the Viking Way. So, first thing, we'll have our uh, piece of wood, and you can really use anything that you want, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, it can be right off of the wood pile. So, different types of wood are going to be uh, stronger or more durable, but uh, this is a piece of maple that I've got here, but you could really use uh, whatever you've got. Carving the handle is usually the most challenging part for me, um, and on more than one occasion I've had several attempts at making a handle where uh, something's gone wrong in the process and it's broken or um, I've taken off too much material, something like that, and then i got to start over from scratch. So if that happens to you, don't feel bad. It happens to me all the time. I want to quit rambling and we'll, uh, we'll get to working on this. So the first thing I'm going to do with my uh, handle material here is split it in half because it's a little wider. Uh, that I'm going to need for one knife, so possibly I'll be able to get uh, two knives out of it, so I'm just going to split this down the middle. There we go. And you can also see if there's any uh, any cracks or any spots where the bugs have been eating at it. I like to drill out the hole for the tang first uh, because I find it easier when you have more material to work with uh, and there's less chance of it uh, drilling through uh, a handle that you've already pre-shaped. So uh, first step is to find a drill bit that's about the same diameter as the tang. So I'm going to lock this in and we'll start drilling this out. And you can see how it's about two drill bits in diameter, maybe up here it's three. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it, so I'm going to do two uh, or three holes side by side, and that way this should uh, fit in nicely. So I'm kind of going in at an angle because the tang of the knife, you know, basically terminates in a point. And then as I go, the center portion, there it goes. The center portion there is going to get uh, eliminated. Now it's the electric drill. This goes a little bit faster, but I'm feeling kind of old school today, so. Okay, so I've got a little bit bigger uh, bit on there. It's about the same uh, diameter as the width of the tang. Get in there. Right now it's just a matter of uh, checking the final fit. So you can see that the bit was more than long enough 
that you would think that that whole tang would go in there. So it's getting hung up right there in the middle. And that's actually on there pretty solid. I started to get these things off. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could uh, heat this up and try and burn it the rest of the way in. But burning the tangs in, it always just makes the opening of the tang hole just bigger because invariably this part is going to get hot as well. You, you really don't need that. So that's going to just sort of erode the mouth of uh, where the tang of the knife is going to go into. So I'm really not a big fan of, of doing that. Sometimes it might seem like a quick and easy fix, but in my experience that just really hasn't been the, the case all the time. So I'm going to keep drilling and see if I can get this. But if I have to, I'll go to the forge. As you can see how you would think doing a narrow tang would be a easy handle to make, but it's not. But if you made this tang too thick, that would be a real chore to try and make that big enough. Okay, so there it is, my finished knife handle. Just kidding. But I've got the knife tang successfully seated into the handle there. Uh, basically just, you know, trial and error tapping it in and at this point uh, I can't can't get that out this is a real bear to get out at this point I mean this is rock solid um, and on a lot of these Viking knives that have got shorter tanks and there's quite a few of them uh, I've always wondered how do they secure them because there's no uh, holes for a rivet they didn't rivet uh, the knife handles to the tang itself uh, so I always figured they use some sort of adhesive like a uh, pine pitch or hide glue something like that but um, I guess that if they, they had the fit proper, they didn't necessarily, they didn't necessarily need an adhesive. Uh, now, I don't know how long this would last, but just kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing to note. I mean, this is not something that you're going to think would work unless you're actually out there trying it and doing it. So, uh, so at this point, now the next stage is to just remove everything that doesn't look like a handle. Uh, so I'm going to start taking off these corners and just whittling it down. Uh, I'm going to start with the axe for the big uh, heavy work and then I'll move on to the draw knife. Alright, looking a little bit better there. And so when I'm uh, shaving down these corners, what I'll do is I'll make little notches up the length of it and then go down. Rather than trying to just take it from one point here because that way you can risk taking off too much of a chunk at once. This way, notching it like that, you have more control of what material you remove. So that hand, or that, that blade is still uh, rock solid in there. I can't believe it. Um, I think before I get too carried away, I'm gonna get it in the vise and uh, start on it with the draw knife. Of 
But you can see how with a sharp axe and a soft enough wood, a little hatchet can go a long way. So I got the blade locked in the vise. It's one advantage to having that stuck in there like that. Uh, but basically, I'm going to kind of work the four different corners and uh, just, you know, draw the knife towards me. So I'm going to pull from the, the, the center line of the handle here and then when I flip it around I'll do the same this way and that way it should uh, hopefully create kind of a hourglass uh, shape, subtly at least. And I got a knot right here. I left the handle a little bit long. It probably won't end up being this long, but this way I'm able to lock this bit in the vise here without damaging the actual handle. Now I really wish I didn't have this knife on here now. I don't really want to impale myself in the chest. One of the wrists of knife making, I guess. So even if you don't have like a draw knife or a, uh, a bench vise, you can still just use a regular fixed blade knife or even a folding knife and just whittle your handle to shape. So with something like maple, which is fairly soft, it's not really a big deal. And I still like to do it for the finer detail work. And so you can see how I'm I'm holding the work in my left hand and uh, I've got the, the thumb of my right hand on the spine of the knife there and I'm using the left hand to kind of help push that. So the left hand is almost doing more of the work. And I'm just sort of rotating my, my right there. So that way you're able to use strength from both of your hands and you're not just trying to power it through with your right. Okay, so you can see I'm getting pretty close to being done with this. Uh, and there's another technique that I like to use that gives you uh, good control. Just kind of pull it into your chest and pulling the knife out away from you. And I've got uh, the knife and the handle pretty, pretty straight. Not quite. There's still a little bit of a bend to it. That kind of symmetry is one of the uh, more challenging aspects of uh, whittling your own handle. But we really don't have too many examples of uh, handles on Viking knives. And I mean, as long as it works, that's the main thing. It doesn't need to be perfect. And uh, I think we have a little bit uh, we have a little bit different design aesthetic nowadays different expectations than what they might have had back then. So it doesn't really bother me too much, but I like to try to keep it to uh, but it's good to try to hold ourselves to a little bit higher standard. So I'm always I always strive for perfection but Definitely never able to achieve it yet, but uh, that's what helps me improve. But I also don't let imperfection hold me back. I still can't get this knife out of here. But uh, basically, I'm going to round off this end here. Probably uh, cut it down and kind of uh, smooth it up. And then we're going to sand over the whole thing and just sort of put the, the final finishing uh, shape into it. And at some point I gotta get the blade out of here to heat treat, but we're not there yet.
Okay, so now we're just going to uh, round that up with the knife. Okay, so I got the handle off of there with some light tapping with a uh, with a hammer. And so now it's time to just sort of uh, put the finishing touches on it. So with a sharp knife, you could painstakingly whittle everything smooth and try and uh, get out all the knife marks and stuff like that. And in the Viking Age, maybe that's what they did. I really don't think we know the answer. Nowadays, I usually just like to use sandpaper. Uh, I know they certainly didn't have that. Uh, so, sanding it up is fairly common, uh, but if you've got one of these work sharp grinding tools, uh, it's actually really easy just to take an old belt and uh, sand it up. And this is just an easy way to just smooth everything up, but it's not really traditional. So I just wanted to show you that you don't necessarily need sandpaper to get this smooth and professional looking. And I got some uh, linseed oil and dirt and stuff are, are getting out of the, the handle here, so with the, the white maple it's very noticeable. But just goes to show that you really don't need a lot of fancy tools. Then again, sandpaper isn't that fancy of a tool. So once I get this poly or once I get this sanded up to the desired smoothness, it'll be time to stain it. Now what I've taken to doing recently is gluing the handle of the knife into this first and then staining it so that way if you get any glue or anything on the handle, you can take it off so that way you're not uh, risking messing up a nice finished handle. So, next thing to do is uh, get the knife in the forge and uh, get it heat treated and uh, and then we'll come back and glue it into the handle. So we got the uh, blade heat treated there and so now uh, we're ready basically to just glue the blade into the handle and then we'll have a finished knife. But uh, there's going to be a little bit of a hole right here uh, where we drilled out the handle. So, and you could leave it just the way it is like that and that's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I'm sure that in the Viking age they didn't mess around with trying to make their uh, handles, you know, super extra pretty, but I'm sure some of them did. Uh, so what I like to do is make kind of a copper cap at the end of the handle there. So you can see on this one, you know, it just kind of gives the knife a little extra eye appeal, makes it look nice, uh, and also kind of just hides up that that hole there, just makes it look a little more professional. And so what I'm going to do right now is just show you how I do that. So basically I just get a uh, piece of copper piping from the plumbing section of the hardware store, and so I'm going to cut this down with the hacksaw, flatten it out, and then I'll uh, trace out my piece and cut it to shape. Okay, so we got our copper flattened out, and now with the knife handle, we'll just trace out the pattern of it. So there we go, and then we'll just uh, cut this out with the hacksaw. So I got the little copper piece cut out here. And you can see it's still got some hard edges, but before I polish up the sides, I'm going to uh, drill out the center and fit the uh, tang of the knife to it while I still have a little bit of uh, leeway. So we got the hole drilled through the copper piece, and now I've got a set of uh, small files. I'm going to find my uh, square one here. 
and we'll just uh, shape this up for the knife tang. So I've got a slightly flatter file here. I'm going to use that to kind of just clean up the edges. Okay, so we got the uh, knife tang in there. Still need a little more clearance. We've got to get it up about to there. So we'll go back to the square file and just enlarge the hole we got. Okay, so we got the uh, we've got the hole big enough. So the knife slides on there, and so that's that's kind of what the fit'll be like. So we've got a little bit of uh, extra copper there, and so I'll just start uh, shaving all that off. So we've got a good fit to our handle here, and uh, so what I like to do now is just glue the whole thing together, and then I'll kind of do like a final polish and fit so that uh, the the handle to copper transition is nice and smooth. Uh, so before I do that, I'm just gonna polish up the uh, the face of the copper on some uh, wet dry sandpaper, just to give it a nice polished look. Okay, so we'll get the uh, handle of the knife in the vise here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pour a bunch of glue down the uh, tang hole there. And I've got some uh, uh, Gorilla Glue Epoxy. It doesn't really matter what the brand is, but um, I like this kind of nozzle configuration on the epoxy, especially with this little tang hole, because I'll just be able to squirt both halves in there and this is a smaller tang but we can kind of get uh, get that epoxy in there and work it down with uh, some wire and so this stuff you're supposed to uh, mix up so I'll just mix it up inside of the handle itself and I'm almost out of epoxy here so I'll just go ahead and use up the whole thing but this works really well when you can just fit both of the nozzle ends into the handle. It's easier than trying to mix it up and then uh, get it all in there. And I'm not really too worried about getting on the handle because I'll just sand all of that off. But I mean, I don't want to make uh, too much of a mess here. Just let gravity pull it down. If it was a little warmer, it would uh, go down easier. And it's good to get some on the uh, on the edge of the handle here because that's what our uh, cap will adhere to. Okay, so we'll let gravity kind of pull that glue down into the knife. The extra I'm just going to put onto the uh, tang itself. And then very important, we got to get our uh, gotta get our cap on there. Slide that in there. And then as it kind of cures and dries there, we'll uh, make sure it's seated. Clean up any of the excess glue. And uh, most importantly of all, make sure it's centered. Okay, so the glue has cured for a couple days here. And the blade is uh, successfully secured to the handle. So now I'm just going to kind of clean up the uh, copper here where it meets the uh, the wood of the handle. And I'm probably going to use my uh, work sharp grinder for that, but you could also use the same uh, little files or uh, mill basket file to do all that. So we'll clean that up and then we'll put some uh, stain on the handle. This also cleans up any of the uh, glue that you got in the handle as well. Well, you could also use your uh, little files too, especially on the copper. 
probably wouldn't use it on the wood, but. So I got that all cleaned up, so now I'm just gonna go over it with some uh, sandpaper. This is some 100 grit sandpaper, and I'll take it down to probably just uh, 220, that's about all I do. And so there was a little bit of a crack in the natural wood right in here, and I filled that in with epoxy just to stabilize it. So the wood isn't going to be perfect, but it will have some character to it. And it'll definitely be a unique knife. So I got the handle, sand it up the way I want it, and then I've got some of my uh, homemade birch oil. I keep it in the uh, tea tin here so that I can heat up the metal and uh, warm it up because it goes on a little bit easier. But uh, you don't need very much. You know, just a little bit at a time. Because with this little bit, it goes a long, a long way. And if you get too much on there, it just takes, just takes too long to dry. Make sure you, and I make sure to get it in the maker's mark there, so that kind of stands out nice. Okay, then when I, once I got it on there, I like to take a rag and then kind of wipe off all the extra. So that way it'll dry nice and nice and evenly. You can see some uh, tiger stripe pattern coming in through the uh, the maple there. Kind of cool. So I got a little bit of a uh, second coat on there. So now it's starting to get a little bit more of a that kind of uh, golden brown color instead of just that uh, ugly brown color. So it's a little it's a little cold today, and this stuff definitely works better when it's. Uh, when it's warm. So with my tin here we'll just uh, take a lighter, heat that up. Okay so here's what the handle looks like after that birch oil is dried. It took uh, many many months but um, you know, now it's it's finally not sticky and that's how you know when it's uh, good to go. Uh, what I could do is put a coat of linseed oil on top of that or uh, flaxseed oil, but uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is, just the the, uh, the pure birch oil finish. And uh, if you end up making your own birch oil, it's gonna be very sticky. Uh, if it gets on your hand, it's very difficult to get off. But what I have found is that linseed oil is a really good way of uh, diluting that birch oil to either get it off your hands or um, kind of uh, mix it into the handle for a combination finish. So when it comes to making knife handles, there's many, many ways that you can do it. You don't necessarily have to do it uh, the way that I do, but this is kind of the way that I've found uh, works the best for me, especially making uh, Viking style knives. But I think the most important thing uh, that you should take away from this video if you're uh, looking to get into knife making and you wanna make your first knives uh, is don't let the lack of material or tools discourage you. Figure out a way to do it with what you have, and uh, you know, just with wood from the wood pile and some stain from the hardware store, you can come up with some nice knife handles, and you'll grow from there. The birch oil fish was something I was experimenting with, and it did come out nice, but it just took such a long time to dry that I don't know that I'll do that again. But it was still something uh, neat to experiment with, and I and I am happy with the way this turned out. Uh, I still got to put an edge on it, and then I'll make a sheath for it. Uh, and then at some point it'll probably end up on my Etsy web store, so uh, you can check that out just to see what sort of knives I've got up there now. If you're uh, interested in helping to uh, support the forge, that would be awesome. But uh, as always, I appreciate the support. Thanks for watching the video, and until next time, be more Viking.